Today we talk about digital watercolor in Rebel, a graphic program that was created to imitate traditional techniques and not only their appearance but also the behavior of the paints. When I saw Rebel for the first time it dazzled me with this spreading paint and I bought it immediately. Later I participated in many tests of new versions of the program and I can say that it has developed amazingly. The new features are really exciting, but I still think that the most awesome are the watercolor and oil paints. You can get acquainted with all these wonders on the website of Escape Motions, which is a Slovakian company standing behind the creation of Rebel. The greatest highlights are the brushes, which are divided into 8 categories. In each of them you will find a set of various brushes, which will replicate the behavior of paint and different effects in a chosen technique. The main categories are oils and acrylics with this amazing impasto effect. Then we have express oils, uh, are similar but without the thickness of paint and it is due to the acceleration work in Rebel because the impasto effect requires more computer power so if you want to speed up the work and still want to have oil texture, express oils are the right choice then. Then we have the watercolor paints and their main advantage is the presence of water in the brush. Water is also a factor that is present in inks. In the dry media category you will find pencils, charcoal and here you can see the importance of the texture of the paper and the interaction of the texture with the chosen brush. The situation is similar with the brushes in the pastel category. And the last two categories, markers and areographs, are more similar in appearance to the typical digital brushes, known from other programs, but also like all brushes works with the texture of the paper. In addition, the last section is used to store favorite brushes, which can be from very different categories. The paper texture and color are selected when opening a new document, but we can change it at any time in the settings of the background layer in the layers panel. Although oil paints are not the heroes of this video, I think it's worth showing their possibilities. The most interesting feature is just adding oilness, which you can uh, control in the panel with brush properties. A gorgeous feature of oil paints is also the ability to apply metallic paints, and this is something that uh, can only be applied to oil paints by turning on the diamond icon in the layers panel. This diamond will appear on the selected layer and all paints on this layer become metallic and it looks so realistic and in the insta stories of escape motion someone asked whether they will also be visible on the print. You know they expected that the printer will print this metallic color, <laughs> it was funny. But look at it, it looks so realistic that this question was probably justified, how do you think? We are already moving on to watercolor brushes, but just a moment more on the topic of water in Rebel, because this is a very important point for understanding the whole process. We can view the presence of water on a layer using the water tool, that later droplet in the left tool panel, or by turning the eye in the layers panel. If water is present on the layer, it will highlight in blue. At this point there is no water on the layer, so nothing is happening, but we can change this quickly by soaking the whole layer. Then the whole layer lights up blue. We can also add water by adding paint with a lot of water and also by using the water tool and using brushes with clean water. Understanding the importance of water in the painting process in rubber is crucial. The more water, the more these stains spread. Now let's check what happens if we dry the layer. We can do this from the layer panel or using the sponge tool uh, where we can wipe the water of the sheet selecting the appropriate brush. And I guess there is no surprise that the brushes we applied with a lot of water or on a wet layer spill more than brushes applied on a dry layer. In addition to the presence of water in the brush or on the canvas, an important factor is still the tilt. In the traditional process we tilt the sheet of paper to direct the flow of water. Here we have a suitable tool for this called tilt. By moving the tilt indicator we can decide the direction of water flow and also the speed of flowing down. 
If you want to significantly reduce the flow, it's enough to press the blue dot in the center of the circle and the tilt isn't active, but the paint will still spread a bit, depending on how much water we used. The behavior of the paint on the sheet can be adjusted by adding or removing water and directing the tilt. If you want to stop the paint from flowing, we press the shortcut F on a keyboard, it's a shortcut from freeze, and it stops spreading of the paint across the paper, but the area still remains wet. Watercolor brushes have different modes to choose from. They can be transparent, semi-transparent and opaque. Traditional watercolors are transparent paints, which means that the previous layer will be visible after the next layer is applied. In today's demonstration, all watercolors will be used in a transparent mode. Another interesting feature is uh, the different painting modes of the same brush. Assign it to following numbers on the keyboard. So, number one is simple painting, and two, painting and mixing the paint on the paper, three, painting and blending the paint, four, just blending, and five, using the same brush as an eraser and I often use it uh, for other categories of brushes, but in the case of watercolor, I primarily use the first mode. While we can adjust the amount of water in the brush only in watercolors, we can also add water to all paints and they will start flowing too. We can combine all these categories of brushes with each other and achieve a great variety of effects and it's super fun and gives us that element of spontaneity and interactivity that we love when we paint traditionally. Also a cool option is that the panels are disappearing when we are painting underneath them. And another useful thing is that the flowing of the paint stops when we adding another color. And only if we pull the pen away from the screen the flowing continues. And of course we work all the time with the finger uh, above F on a keyboard which stops flowing. And Ctrl Z which undoes the spreading and starts again. Also very impressive here is the performance of tools for transforming, because thanks to nanopixel technology the image after transformation is still of incredibly good quality, just take a look at it. Rebel has a huge amount of other features, very interesting additions such as structure, stamps, stencils, pattern filling or applying gradients which can then be poured and spread with water. Whew, there is a lot of it and I hope I have encouraged you to experiment and now we will finally focus specifically on the digital watercolor painting. Well, so let's get to work. Pen in hand, I choose the texture of the paper while opening a new file and I choose a watercolor texture and start with a sketch based on slanted composition. The first sketch is a bit loose and not very definite. Here I should mention the very comfortable use of the navigator panel and shortcuts like mirroring and uh, for rotating the canvas, which I do very often. Rotating the canvas does not affect the paint spread, but some movements are easier for me to perform at the different angle. I'm adding a new layer with a multiply mode for the new more defined sketch. I reduce the transparency of the earlier sketch and I add all these details and I focus on this process because later this paint will be spread over various areas and this sketch will keep it more in shape, more in control. When driving a book we can see how the rurals work in Rebel. We press shift, we designate a direction and when we press pen and draw uh, there is a straight line. Handful to use, especially when drawing architecture, but when I'm starting Starting to paint a snowflake, you can see that there is still a room for improvements. I would prefer to use uh, a symmetry tool uh, here and there is no symmetry tool in Rebel yet. The software is updated every year, so I cross my finger for this feature. I'm placing the snowflake behind the head as a kind of winter crown and I'm adjusting uh, it to the perspective using the transformation tool. On the next layer I mark the character area and for this I use an airbrush with such an undefined edges with a soft tip. Then I erase the elements that overlap this figure and I also do not keep all contours as very sharp. 
I'm keeping the soft contour in some places. I will want that uh, the paint applied to the figure and the background underneath slightly overlap each other. The color I'm feeling the character is not important, I'm changing it uh, to white using uh, hue saturation filter. I just wanted to see the painted area and then I'm changing this layer for multiply mode. This will be my shape layer and I'm adding a clipping mask layer uh, above. In this way I can paint only the character but without changing the shape layer. On the clipping mask layer in the layers panel I check the option to wet the whole layer and it refers to the layer underneath so we have wet only the shape of the snow maiden. And it is so much more convenient, this paint will not spread further. We can splash freely, apply paint with plenty of water and have no worries. The spreading uh, of the paint is checked, because blue dot in the tilt panel is checked, but I didn't give direction of water spreading and I tried to do it in a fairly gentle colors. I have reduced transparency at this point in the brush, because watercolors definitely look best when they retain that lightness. The hair and the rest of the picture is already a layer underneath, that is the layer with the background. I add a blue paint behind the figure's head and here already we will be strongly interested in which direction this paint will spread. By adding water on the layer and also we use the blow tool which is kind of like blowing the paint. And, and using this tool I will want to relate to this radial shape of the snowflake. And this is the most enjoyable part. Um, I'm adding water to the layer, sometimes I'm removing it. And most of all, I do what I do when painting with traditional watercolors. I observe and watch with joy how this paint behaves in its own way. It mixes, creates textures, streaks. I think that this is the coolest element of working in Rebel. As usual, when painting with watercolors, I move from light colors toward darker colors and I add the base colors first. Base colors sometimes vary in hue and with each additional layer I darken the areas on which the shadow will appear and this shadow will be most around the girl's face uh, in the upper part of the picture because that's where I uh, mainly want to direct the viewer's eye. As for elements such as trees, books, letters, beds, these are all created on a separate layer in a normal mode, which is very useful later when I come to the conclusion that, for example, the fruits are too bright and I want to change their color or change the shade of the spurses. Then all I have to do is to mark loosely the shapes with the lasso tool and we know that the color change will not affect the layer underneath, especially since these elements uh, do not overlap each other, so it's very simple. In a nutshell, the painting process is applying paint on the layer, giving direction, using tilt, using blow tool from time to time, watching what happens on the canvas with the F key under my finger. I noticed that we are getting crowded at the bottom of the work. I add another layer in a normal mode. This will cover uh, the previous layer and I lighten them with paint of a lighter color. The paint continues to flow and after adding this white layer I have an impression that we are returning to this winter atmosphere here. Or it's uh, just my impression. Anyway, it certainly works well for my composition because it turns the eye away from the bottom of the work and directs it to those darkest moments, so the girl's face um, contrasted with shadows. On a separate layer, in the normal mode, I start to paint this snowflake crown and I use express oils for this, but it could just as well be, for example, with a pencil. And I paint the white swirls of the snow star and to bring it out from the background even more, I add another layer in a multiply mode and I darken area behind the star. And again, I use the blown tool to give the direction using the field pointer also. I added various spatters here as well with spatter brush which are supposed to mimic snow. All these frosty swirls makes me think about fragility and the associations with porcelain with the fragility uh, of this girl's body appears and the idea of outlining such cracks on her body which were then jointed with gold, just like in the Japanese art of Kintsugi. 
gold elements are created on a new layer using oil paint. With the diamond icon turned on in the layer panel and in the visual settings we also have to check the nanopixel technology uh, to be sure it will be uh, work well. And this is the completed illustration on the different monitors and this is one of my biggest complaints. There is no iPad version and I really missed being able to see that spreading paint under the pen and I've used a screenless tablet before. So truth to be told, my Huion uh, screen tablet was specifically built just for uh, using Rebel and Blender. In the case of printing such work, additional paper texture saved in the file is unnecessary, especially when we use a printing paper with a texture, like in my case. I created another layer uh, filled with white just to cover the paper texture. I hope you like it because I think it's a cool idea for a giveaway. So if you feel like receiving such a art print with a signature from me, please leave a comment with the answer for the question. What is your favorite art technique and why? It doesn't matter if it is digital or traditional, just write about it. I will wait about two weeks for responses and I will send this illustration to the selected uh, person. I've been recommending Rebel for many years, but only now it came to my mind that maybe it would be worth participating in an affiliate program, which consists of a percentage of orders that are placed through the link, which I will provide in the description of this video. So if you are considering purchasing Rebel, then please use this link and it will be a nice support for me. Most importantly, I recommend this program because I have been using it myself for years. I'm fascinated by it and it develops amazingly and just love it. What more can I say? Maybe just thank you for sticking with me to the end and hopefully see you soon.